Hey, 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 it's Shelly, and it is about one month until it's time to get back on campus, back to school, back on the grind, and if you are an incoming freshman, you are going to be in an entirely new environment, and you are going to have a lot to learn, and you probably have some kind of idea of what kind of things you're going to be experiencing, what kind of friends you want to make, what kind of things you want to do, what kind of person you're going to be, and for a lot of people, college is a time where they really want to become themselves, make changes. Um, go for it. Go change their life and make the most of this opportunity because you start to recognize this is the beginning of adulthood. So with that said, I'm here with five important tips on how to make the most of your college experience. So let's get started. So tip number one is to know who you are. I know everyone says that you change a lot in college. That's completely true. But some things that are at the core of your being are not going to change. Things like understanding what your belief system is. It might change during college. It might not. But understanding what you believe right now. Understanding what kind of things are important to you. What kind of social issues you care about. Understanding what kind of activities you enjoy. Understanding what kind of people you want to surround yourself with. Knowing what your priorities are going into college is going to make you more grounded in what you believe and help you to better define your place when you get there. I know for me personally, my big... Ooh, there was a huge fly. So I know for myself personally, some things that were very important to me coming to college is to find... Oh my god, I need to kill this fly. On guard. So I know for me personally, some things that were very important to me was maintaining my relationship with Christ, making new friends that were actually going to help me and motivate me and become part of my life forever, um, finding organizations that had to do with curating friendship in a positive environment as well as body positivity for everyone, and finally, just working hard on my academics because I do know I want to go to a great school for grad school and just making sure that all of those things are lined up so that I can achieve those goals in the end. So for you, your priorities might be, I really like student government. I'm really into politics. I want to be making a change while I'm in college. I want to be doing protests. I want to be doing those kind of things, and that's really important. Maybe something that's important to you is networking, finding connections that are going to help you advance yourself in your career. What? There's a fly. I would suggest you write down a list of the different things that you want to do once you're on campus and make it your goal to make that happen as soon as possible. And there's the fly. I got it. My second tip is to be open to other people. So now that you know who you are and what's important to you, it's good to be important. It's good to be important. It's good to be accepting of what's important to other people. Um, for example, I am not that into politics, but one of my closest friends at school is very heavily into it, and she keeps me up to date. She'll let me know when I'm out of the loop, and I really appreciate it. Even though it's not something that I necessarily value, I can recognize the importance of it, especially to her and her life, and she definitely makes sure it's something that I'm aware of now. So that's just kind of a small example, but one thing I like to bring up when knowing how to be open to others is anyone who might be your roommate. From my personal experience freshman year, I had four roommates, and we all literally had vastly different personalities. By the end of the year, we called each other the mystery gang, and each of us literally embodied the personality of someone like the Scooby-Doo crew, and I was considered the Fred. I am very much on my stuff all the time, and I'm like, I need to take control of everything, and I recognize that that could get on their nerves, but whoever's the Velma of the room might be a little too prissy for everyone else and get on someone's nerves. Whoever, or that's Daphne, I switched that. Whoever's the Velma of the room might be so focused on their studies that they don't have time to have fun with someone else. Whoever's the Scooby might not be organized enough and causing, whoever, whatever, whatever. And this is not me directly complaining about my roommates because I do love them and I'm really excited to see what the future is going to bring them. And I'm excited to see how our friendship grows now that we're not rooming together. But I really want you to be open to different characteristics that other people have because if you're not willing to be open to what other people bring to the table, you're going to have kind of a boring meal. Ooh, I like that. If you're not open to what other people bring to the table, you're going to have a boring meal. Yes, just because you're bringing the chicken doesn't mean you don't need rice, some collard greens. You need someone to bring some juice. You need the ice. Shoot, someone might beat the table. You don't know. You don't know. For example, the first thing I did when I got on campus, I checked out all the local churches, and I needed to find one that fit my personality. And Lord, let me tell you, some of them were not working for me. There was one that was like three hours long, and the pastor talked way too long, and it was too much for me. And I was like, I love the Lord, but like, you know, 
we gotta go. But eventually I found something that worked for me. Another thing that was important to me was finding ways to unify myself and make friends with people all over the dorm. So I tr tried out, tried out, I ran, I campaigned, I don't know, I interviewed, that's a better word for it. I interviewed for the position of president of my hall and I ended up getting it. And through that, I was able to meet everyone in the dorm and talk to everyone in the dorm and host events that catered to their needs and their interests and stuff like that. And that was something that was really exciting to me because I really like making the most of experiences and helping others make the most of experiences and then just talking to people about things. And I mentioned earlier, something that's really important to me is body positivity. And I instantly joined this club called Beyond Curves and they were like a mentoring program for like inner city youth type thing and just helping them be positive about themselves and their life situation. That was something that really got me thinking of my own privilege and I'm not going to rant about that because that's a whole nother video. But just basically find different things that are important to you and cater to the things that are important to you so that you are able to make the most of your college experience. Fourth tip, don't drop that GPA. Hey, don't drop that GPA. No matter what you wanna do after college, having the best GPA you can is going to help you. I'd say put down for yourself what your goal is before you even start college, before each semester, so that you can continue to work towards it and keep it up there. And I say, Shoot for the moon, and if you land on the stars, you do just fine. For example, every semester I've had a girl, I want a 4.0. But the stars usually look more about 3.6 to 3.8. And when I put that on my resume, it still looks good. At the end of the day, you're in school for an education, so that should always be one of your top priorities, even if it's not... Honestly, even if it's not your number one priority, because I understand for some people, college is the time that they want to live it up and have the time of their lives, but it should at least be number two, you know? It should put, put it up there. Even though some people say your GPA is not on your diploma, it is on your resume, and that's what your future employer is looking at, so... Yeah. My last tip is to be conscious of who you're sharing yourself with, whether that is your time, your body, your money, your thoughts, your feelings, no matter what it is, be careful and conscious of who you are sharing yourself with. Be careful, be mindful, not just that it's someone who's going to spread rumors and talk about you and share what you've shared with them with, or that they're going to put you on blast, or they're going to give you some kind of disease, which is all the top reasons to do that, but because who you spend your time with and who you share yourself with becomes a reflection on you. The kind of people that you spend your time with start to become you and you might have noticed this when you start hanging out with a new person you start picking up their slang you start picking up their habits little by little and that becomes the same when you hang out with a whole slew of new people so you have to be conscious that these are kind of people that you wouldn't mind them rubbing off on you what's that saying on um, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link and honestly it might not be bad for you to be the weakest link because then people are going to strengthen you up they're going to harden you toughen you but you don't want to be around people that are just bringing you down so besides the obvious things you hear about like, you know, wrap it up, don't tell everyone your business, blah, 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 blah. Just be conscious of not only what kind of bad things can happen to you on the outside, but what kind of things can happen to you on the inside when you share things about yourself with other people. And then you're in turn, they are sharing themselves with you and how that can affect you because you want to grow in a positive way and you can't grow in a positive way if you are around negative people. So I think that's all I have to say on the subject. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment and tell me what your top, let's say top three goals are for this next upcoming school year. I'm really interested to see. Maybe you might inspire a goal in me. I don't know. My top three goals for this coming semester are to get a 4.0 GPA as usual, continue to find different opportunities for myself and to make the most of the new opportunities I have given myself, and um, a couple more things that I'm going to surprise you with later. Yeah, like I said, click below, subscribe, like, comment what your goals are for the upcoming semester, and uh, follow us on Instagram. My Instagram is underscore Shelly Smiles with two S's on the end. Chelsea changed her Instagram, actually. So don't pay attention to the thing at the end of some of the videos. Um, her Instagram is down below because I know if I try to say it, I'm going to say it wrong. So follow us there. Our Ask FM is Chelly and Shelly. If you have any questions related to Spelman or college in general or anything, well, don't get crazy. Don't get crazy. But ask us whatever you'd like. And uh, yeah, we'll be back with a new video. Well, Chelsea will be back with a new video. Chelsea will be back with a new video next week, so stay tuned, and yeah, okay, that's it. Bye!
Tum 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 t